Hey, detective. <sighs> what are you doing? Oh, I found something. Great. Was it alcohol? God, no. I just got the wind knocked out of me. I think I know how to break the contract with the dark man. What exactly does that mean? Everything going back to normal. Uh, all right. Uh, I found some more information on Dorsetto and the patients. There are some seriously strange things going on here. I'm pretty sure two of the patients are dead and maybe even the clerk. Oh, yeah. I kind of just gave up on worrying about that. Well, just keep your eyes open, I suppose. What were you doing again? Jeremy made a pact with the Dark Man to keep all the madness locked inside Dorsetto. All right. I'm gonna break it. I just have to... Where is it? Where's the talisman? It's around your neck. Ah! Oh. Ah! Oh. I worry, detective. Don't. I'm fine. I worry that you're not much help on this case. But at least you're a good distraction. Trust me. You're getting your money's worth. At this rate, I'm an absolute bargain. Combin never thought he'd be so happy to be back at Dorsetto. It felt like he had crawled through a long, dark tunnel of misery and regret. Now that he was back, Combin could look into the steps mentioned in the contract. But there was one thing that gnawed on him. What exactly did this have to do with Dr. Gray? Be around here somewhere. He wouldn't leave this house. I don't know what to think anymore. You run into that dick fella. Who is he? Can he be trusted? I think he wanted a good guy. Well, you know, not good. Will he be all right with her coming? Praise the mother. She don't need to know about all that. Just, help Just calm down. It ain't time yet. Hurts. As far as I can tell, Detective Combi seems to be solving problems, not causing them. Just be ready in case he starts anything. The two orderlies still hadn't found Jeremy. Conby figured this was good news. Emily had reminded him about some strange deaths at Dossetto, and Conby wasn't sure who he could trust.
lunacy in the Astarte artist colony. There must be a spare key to Dr. Gray's office in here somewhere. I don't have the combination for this, but maybe Jeremy did. to get Jeremy out of that contract so we can get the hell out of here. Something tells me I'm gonna have to put my talisman to use. Every night the dark man stands opaque at the threshold of my room, counting the days until my spirit... How did you first come to understand such things, Senora? How did you know that the battered boil in the basement would lead me to Lafayette Cemetery?
running to the orderlies right now. I'm not sure I can trust them. Detective Conby, good to see you again. Solved your case yet? I'm trying. Hey, Grace, you okay? Oh, she is just peachy, Detective. Are you looking forward to the Feast of St. John, Grace? I can't wait. Kids, ain't they great? What exactly are you planning for tonight? Oh, not much. We eat, we drink. Pay tribute to the wishing tree in the conservatory. The usual. Then why all the excitement? That is just something about tonight. Something's different. I think we all feel it. Besides, we got ourselves some new words for the prayer thanks to your buddy Jeremy. She'll come and turn the world inside out, and things will begin again. That sounds strangely threatening. You should come. Oh, God damn it, Grace. Stay put for once. There's something missing. Better hold on to these. Wouldn't want them to get lost. Jeremy knew that the only one who could help him now was the guest in room number three. The room seemed to have been empty for so long. But that wasn't allowed to be true. The story needed to be different. To include something from the outside, he would bring the guest back to room three and show them what was in that safe. Nine, one, three. But those were not the right numbers. 
That was the combination for the safe in the clerk's office. McCarthy was a deadbeat. His mere presence annoyed Conby. It was like watching the worst version of himself mock him by simply being worthless. While Conby enjoyed watching the child outplay the drunkard, there was something terrifyingly familiar about Greece. It was taunting him, like he was supposed to remember but couldn't. Jeremy knew that the only one who could help him now was the guest in room number three. The room seemed to have been empty for so long. But that wasn't allowed to be true. The story needed to be different. To include something from the outside, he would bring the guest back to room three and show them what was in that safe. Nine, one, three. But those were not the right numbers. That was the combination for the safe in the clerk's office.
Surprisingly neat. Maybe I've been selling that old barfly short. Looks like McCarthy has something hidden inside. Sometimes I think this place makes me worse. That Dossetto might be my grave. A coffin made of ostentatious architecture. A Taj Mahal for the drunken depressed. There's something about Dossetto. Something about Dr. Gray. Like we all pretend that we're here to get better. When in fact we are here to be forgotten. I know that number. Where's that from? I did this. I wrote that. I recognize this view. The empty room always felt familiar. It had a mild fragrance of crushed leaves and wet sand that somehow convinced visitors that they belonged. It wasn't real, of course, but it was more real than many other things you could find. Louisiana State Board of Private Investigator Examiners grants the following license to Edward Carmby, Decatur Street, New Orleans. License number 196692-LA. Good until May 15th, 1930.
detective. I have made many discoveries in my case. The child we want is safe, thanks to good people like me and you. We are so similar, but you don't see all the things I do. To find your man, Jeremy, you also need to look for the girl. It has always been that way. The young deliver us all. You should have a look in my room. There's a piece of the puzzle you will need. Take care now. My coffee. How long have I been here? Looks like McCarthy has something hidden inside. Why would McCarthy lock this up? Was he trying to keep Grace from completing the shame? If so, couldn't she have just made another drawing? What the hell happened in here?
This looks familiar. How am I back at the office? Jeremy's never been here. That's me, isn't it? slipping away into oblivion. A welcoming dark voice wrapped around my mind like a heavy blanket. It turned off suddenly as I woke up from the sound of my office door closing shut. A messenger had left a telegram from Mrs. Saunders. She had a lead on where to find her husband and her kidnapped daughter. to drink so much back then. When was the... Some kid got taken by her father, headed out of state, but he had made a mistake by selling a painting that his wife actually cared about to a collector named Thornhill to fund his venture. That's how I tracked him down. At least I think so.
Thornhill wasn't a bad man, but he had principles keeping him from handing out information about his deals. So he needed some convincing. Well, every case can't be squeaky clean. sold a valuable painting to Thornhill, hoping the money would carry him to wherever he was going. The painting, now leaning on an easel in Thornhill's bedroom, had a certain mesmerizing gloom that seemed to call out to me, telling me I was needed for something important. I felt myself falling into the painting, only being brought back by Thornhill, thrusting an address to a Hotel St. George into my hand and asking me to get the hell out.
my way to the hotel, the Morton gang caught up with me. I owed them money, a lot of it. I can't remember what for, probably some dumb gambling debt growing in size for each payment missed. I punched one of them out, and I sent the others packing. It was a stupid move. They'd be back. I found him. In the hotel ledger, I recognized the handwriting of the signature, Ted Stryker. It was him. I could feel it. It was the kidnapper I was hunting. I put on my knuckles and hurried up to his room. Something about that name, Ted Stryker, rings a bell. It feels vaguely familiar. this room, but I didn't catch up with them here. I must have followed them, but where? That's right, he was running away, ditching his old life and marriage in New Orleans to find something better in Tallahassee. And he took his daughter with him against the will of the mother. That's why she hired me. But I stopped him. I caught up with him at the Pearl River Bridge. Detective Comby didn't recognize the bridge across Pearl River. It was firmly obfuscated by trauma. Events that had left Comby scar. For life. 
Pearl River. This is where I caught up with them. This is what the dark man wanted me to revisit. But I'm still not seeing it. What am I forgetting? I can't believe I didn't recognize him. I looked a little different back then, I suppose. Was any of this real? How do you mean? This day, just... So much is happening. I can't... I think I've lost my head. Do you need me to apologize? I mean... I'm sorry. I don't think I need to begin to explain. You, you're just a kid, Grace. I'm really sorry. I didn't mean for it to happen. Lies. More lies. No, really. I thought I was being a good guy by handing you over to your mother. I didn't know. I, I couldn't have known that she wouldn't care about you. I don't know how this works. What is this for? Some form of admission of guilt. Maybe acceptance. It's what the dark man wants. I guess we just watch my father die again then. You think he's alive? I know he is. He's down there, scared that he won't be able to get out. That he will drown with his daughter again. What are you saying? We gotta save him! We? Do it yourself! I'm down there with him, remember? Can I really save them? This all happened so long ago. I have to find a way to get down there. I have to see it with my own eyes. There was a boat at the house where I entered. If I can raise the bridge, I should be able to get to the car. This must be where the bridge is operated. Nothing's happening. It's like something's holding it back.
Here we go. I should be able to pilot the had run their car off the bridge.
Are you okay? Don't leave me alone. What the hell have you been doing? What's going on here? Look at this mess! I, I, I'm sorry, Mrs. Thompson. Don't make me kick you out of this house! Now get out! Hey, Detective. Mr. Carnby. I'm really worried about you. I'm okay. I just need to catch my breath for a moment. This place? It's... There are some very disturbed figures around here. And I don't think it's just the patients. I've been reading some things about how Dorsetto has a deranging effect on people. I think it might explain... things. What? Just take it easy, okay? I'm gonna go find a way into Dr. Gray's apartment. I wanna know what he's hiding. Emily, don't worry. I think I'm close. I'm gonna set everything right. Just be careful. Thank <laughs> you.